Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us on the next episode of the iPhotography podcast. I'm Stephen, if you've never joined us before. And today is a really, really exciting episode because uh, we have got the one and only Jackson Moyles on our podcast with us today. Um, now, if you don't know the name, you'll certainly know the face. Um, if you have been watching BBC's Great British Photography Challenge, um, it was a program that aired around about May, June time, I think it was maybe about late May in the UK. Uh, hopefully you should be able to kind of catch up with it on the BBC iPlayer if you live abroad. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to watch it in the UK. Uh, but Jackson, um, he's an amateur photographer based out of Dunfermline in uh, Scotland. Uh, and he's he's a photographer who's predominantly landscapes, but you'll see kind of from his portfolio and no doubt what we talk about, he's touched on a range of different uh, genres of photography. Uh, and he was the joint winner of the Great British Photography Challenge, which was a TV show that kind of put him through his paces with uh, five other amateur photographers over a range of different photo assignments covering landscapes, portraiture, nature, documentary. And so we reached out to him and, and to ask him if he wanted to actually come on the podcast so we could talk a little bit about his life as a photographer. We weren't going to get bogged down too much into talking about the TV show because hopefully, you know, you may have seen that by now. Uh, we wanted to find out a little bit more about him, you know, his you know relationship with photography, what it means to him, what he's been doing uh, kind of recently and what he's actually kind of got coming up as well. And any advice potentially that he can give to aspiring landscape photographers. Um, so, yeah, we've got him waiting in the wings. I'm not going to kind of keep him waiting too much longer. I'm really, really excited to talk to him and to find out what he's got to say. But thank you very, very much for listening to the show. Um, if you've not subscribed before, then please, please do. Uh, again, if you've uh, not kind of uh, joined our YouTube channel before, if you've not subscribed, etc., again, please do, because it really, really helps us out. But we'll get started straight away and enjoy the show. Hiya, Jackson. Hi. You okay? You're right. I'm fine absolutely sweltering down here <laughs> oh my god and um, it's the exact same here i just turned off the fan and i'm just looking over it like no because it's making too much noise lovely so jackson welcome along to the i photography podcast um i'm sure many listeners uh, who are say listening to the podcast maybe also watching it as a youtube video uh will recognize your voice and recognize your face now from uk's bbc4 series the great british photography challenge um, and we kind of got to see you kind of develop as a photographer during those episodes but kind of maybe talking about things that didn't touch on you know that much in the show itself can you give us a little bit of a backstory about your photography itself like from when you first picked up a camera until now yeah so i sort of stumbled upon a photography by chance really i i think i went through probably every creative art or subject possible before i actually landed on it uh you know everything from drawing painting anything practical with your hands music all that sort of thing um i tried it all and I enjoyed it. I very much have a creative brain, not academical at all, but it took me until towards the end of school, um, so about 17, 18, before I thought, you know, I like those photos that I'm seeing online. I had a little bit of influence growing up on holidays. We were taking lots of photos, um, and I think subconsciously it maybe had, a, had something to do with it, but um, it was really by chance. I thought, I like those photos, and they make me feel something, they make me feel good. I want to take photos like that. So I had a little bit of money. I thought, I'm going to purchase a, I, I got a Canon 1300D. Yeah, and yeah. Um, straight away, I was like, oh, this is really fun. I like it, it's satisfying. Um, and before I knew it, it all sort of spiraled. You know, it got to the point where everything that I've sort of done over the last four years has been as a result of that moment where I went, I'm going to buy the camera, you know, friendships, relationships, people I've met, places I've gone, it's all been a, a direct effect of that decision one day, which is really strange. So um, it was it was quite a random a random thing to happen, but um, I'm glad it did. Are, are you still, would you still kind of see yourself as creative in other mediums? You said you like to paint and draw. Do you, you still do that? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm a bit more of a diddler. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to claim to be brilliant, but I can't help it. <laughs> You know, and I, I'm, I'm a fanatic with music. I love it. And, um, you know, playing guitar, I was playing drums. So I always wanted to, uh, I enjoyed woodwork at school and building things. I couldn't help it. So it's, yeah. it's things like that that I excelled in. Um, 
takes me like it took me like three years to get maths but i could play the guitar so it was all right <laughs> well it, it's an interesting thing because we've, we've talked about it before i don't know if we've talked about it on a podcast possibly but about kind of why people become photographers in the first place and, and i've always found that there's this urge to create you know it may not be with a camera per se you know as that medium but it's just like you've done like you said with like would uh, you would work you know there's there's that kind of urge to want to actually make something that you know, lasts a long time or something you can give to another person but do you think deep down maybe that's that's what it is for you 100 percent. i always knew i wanted to make things i made videos when i was like 13 i'd make videos for like youtube I hope no one ever finds them uh, <laughs> with video games and things like that. So I always knew I wanted to make things, uh, but I just couldn't quite put my finger on what. Yeah. And uh, it came along at the perfect time because there was that pressure of what are you going to do with your life, which apparently you got to make when you're 17. <laughs> uh, so I was sitting there going, oh, no, what did I do? And that happened by chance, which was something I could do myself, something I could do socially with other people. Um, and it was ideal. So that's what led me on to then go to college. I ended up doing audio visual technology, which was a range of things. So sound engineering, animation, video editing, and obviously photography. And photography was the thing that I think I was like, I definitely want to do this more than the rest. Yeah. Um, not to say that I won't do any of the other ones. Um, they all sort of come together anyway. Yeah. Uh, but just the it's just the medium that spoke to you the most, really. You'd say. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. And don't worry, I'm I'm nearly 40. I'm 40 in a few more years. So don't feel like you've got any kind of urge to find what you want to do with your life. Because some days I sit there and <laughs> thinking, why do I try this? How about doing this? How about doing that? So yeah, I, I don't think I, I'm i like, um, did you ever used to listen to that Baz Luhrmann song, Sunscreen? It was out years yeah. ago, maybe like mid 90s, but you may have may have heard of it. But there's a line in it saying um, the most interesting people that he knows um, hadn't even decided by the age of 40 about what they wanted to do with their life. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's, an, it's a nice kind of thing to live by that there is absolutely no direction anybody should be following. Just do what you enjoy. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't understand who you're meant to have it all, but I don't think you are. But there is that pressure to have it figured out pretty early on. And even yeah. now, I'm sitting going, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> next week, never mind next year or the year after that. And, and that's the fun of it I think especially for photographers that you shouldn't so much you know have you know it's good to have projects and expectations but otherwise you know like you said you found so many connections and relationships that have been born out of your photography you've just got to let it you know go with it especially as yourself being a predominantly a landscape photographer you're dictated to by your conditions around you really so yeah you've just got to take what you can find really yeah yeah definitely it's there's times where um it doesn't go to plan recently. It's not really <laughs> going to plan. I mean, we know we're talking about the weather before. It's the first time ever that it's been sunny this consistently, which is not ideal for what I'm doing. So. Yeah, it, it's the weirdest thing we've said. So we've not long uh, completed finishing uh, filming a landscape course. And the weather, it worked, you know, in our favor sometimes, but I really understood when actually being out, you know, in on location, how important light is, um, that it can look a lovely, lovely day to go for a walk. But if you, as mm -hmm. soon as you kind of want to turn your camera on and take some photographs, you just realize it's not the right conditions. So yeah, having lovely weather like this, as we're experiencing now may seem great, but photographically you look at it oh. and go, God, this is a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's not ideal, but Again, I won't complain at the no. moment. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. So we'll move on anyway, because we've invited you onto the podcast anyway. Um, not specifically to talk so much about your appearance in the TV show, because I'm sure everybody has seen it by now or can still watch it on the uh, on the iPlayer. But I suppose I wanted to kind of dig a little bit more down into about you and photography, you know, your relationship with it really. But what do you think kind of drives you, um, drives your inspiration and your motivation to kind of capture the amazing landscape images that you do? it's strange because I think it's I don't I don't need a lot of motivation because it comes so naturally I was growing up I grew up playing outside going on hikes things like that and I'm always going to be doing it no matter what so it was something that could go hand in hand with that uh, I'm yeah. going to do these things anyway and I want to do them I enjoy doing it so it was perfect that I could take photos as well and they both sort of combined yeah uh, so there are obviously days where the last thing I want to do is get up and drive a few hours, then climb a mountain <laughs> and pee in rain. Uh, and I just want to lie in bed with a cup of tea. But there's, um, 
there's a bit of a bug that comes with it, I think, when you, especially after when you've had a really hellish journey on a particular shoot. Um, and I don't think until you've had a moment like that where it's all going wrong and then you have a moment, a window of opportunity where it goes right, yeah. that's, the, that's, the, that's the moment that gives you that bug to keep going no matter what. So when those other days come later on where you really can't be bothered, you think about that, and that's what keeps you going. You go, oh, it could be another one of those days, though. Yeah, that's, and that's it. Yeah, that. I suppose it's the the unknown, isn't it? Really, that you think, as you say, it could all look absolutely horrendous, you know, in terms of the weather and, and whatever. But you get that moment, and it just, it just kind of gives you that motivation and that warm, fuzzy feeling inside, without sounding too flowery about it. Yeah, yeah. It does. I mean, the way I look at it as well is. A lot of the times I'll go with a mate and we because it's always good to have company, especially if you're climbing. And you know, we'd be eyeing it up and thinking this is not gonna go right. But at the end of the day as well, we come away with a story, which is always great. So the, there's always a positive. It's very easy. I can be quite I'm guilty for being really pessimistic and seeing sort of talking myself out of it. But um I think, as I say, there's been so many uh, moments where it has gone right unexpectedly, and I just try to keep myself remembering that rather than picking apart all the issues with the, the shoot of that day, just thinking about it can go right. And at the very least, there's going to be a funny story where I've been drenched right through. So. <laughs> that's the main thing that well that's it you enjoyed it and yeah sometimes I, I don't even know if it's exclusive to landscape photography but you can go out shooting for whatever purpose and whatever genre and just not get those shots for whatever reason it is um but you know hoping that the next day you may go out and you get something else but ultimately just make sure you enjoy it you know even if you don't go for an end game of i'm looking for this kind of photograph but you've got an experience out of it and you've spent time with people that you love so it's you know there's, there's never a bad thing out of it is there no, exactly, exactly. I've had a bit of a rut with that recently. I'm so motivated to shoot, but I've gone out and it's just not worked out. And I just take that pressure away and focus on something else, experiment that day. That's I think that's something you can do. If what you initially went out to shoot isn't going to happen, then you may as well try a different angle and take that opportunity then to do the thing you wouldn't normally try because you don't want to waste your time. That's um, really good advice, that is, yeah. Yeah, that's think... what I've been doing, especially with a really harsh lighting or maybe it's really flat. I've not had that sweet spot in for a while. So um, that's what I went out. Maybe shoot details, something like that, and um, something I wouldn't normally do. That's that's really good. I mean, it, it leads quite nicely, actually, into the next question that I've got, because I imagine there'll be a lot of people listening that really, really want to get into landscapes, but they're not full-time pros, um, you know, and, and they're, so they've got jobs, got families, got all the other kind of uh, commitments. But, you mm -hmm. know, do you have any advice, I suppose, you know, or anything to help them kind of get through, you know, or kind of basically integrate landscape photography a bit more into their normal routine. I mean, like you said yourself before we came on air, that you're not full time yet. It is an aspiration you want to get to. So how do you balance your job and landscape photography or any kind of photography? What do you find, you know, is useful? Um, I think you've got to take your camera with you everywhere. I don't live in a really dramatic area. It's very rolling hills, fields. There's not a lot going on, so I can't do it on a day-to-day, -day, but I still carry my camera about with me as much as possible because there's days where I'm driving home from work with the lights spot on and you get out and practice and just take the photo. So I think always have, you just got to take your camera with you everywhere and don't be stingy with your um, memory on your SD cards. Just <laughs> Especially if you're just starting, you can be very, you know, I don't want to waste, I just want to take the perfect photo every time. Yeah. It's got to go rapid fire, no matter what, because the amount of times that I look at the viewfinder and I go, this isn't, this is, looks rubbish. Um, and then I've gone back and put it on the big screen and realized I could make something out of this. Yeah. You know, maybe I've accidentally overexposed it. I just bring the, uh, the exposure right down again and it reveals all the detail. So it's never a write-off. I think you just got to go rapid fire, especially when you're starting, is shoot anything and everything and just have your camera out as much as you can. Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. I should say, you know, just enjoy everything that's around you. And then I say over time, you may want to, you know, get some more specific and get more kind of particular in terms of a style as well. But, you know, I, I fully agree. It's one thing I kind of, I love about cameras is having like your LCD screen on the back, but it shows you very little in terms of the actual content and the detail of the image. But once you get up bigger on screen, that's when it's, it's best to kind of uh, appreciate what you've done really. So I, I think that's a really nice thing to say, but 
coming on to your own photography itself, I mean, I've actually got it on screen at the side here, your, uh, your Instagram and your, your website, that as a photographer, I'm looking at you and thinking, you've kind of got a pretty clear idea of what you like in terms of your photography, the, the style, you know, there's a fairly good balance between a, a structured composition. There's a little bit of drone photography and your, your style of editing is again, a very, very consistent, but uh, is that something that you consider when taking your shots or, you know, are you still in that phase? You're just happy to shoot whatever catches your eye. I, I always go with a plan there's always something or somewhere that I'm going in particular, especially with the drone, because you don't have a lot of time. You, you know, I maybe have 20 minutes of battery. So if I, I can't really afford to send it up there and not have an idea. Um, so usually I'll have a structure in mind or a thing that I want to shoot. Uh, and then once I'm up there and I've maybe achieved it or not, that's when I'll maybe have a play around. Um, and it's the same handheld. If I've got a location to go to. I've got a rough idea in my mind. And I'll try and carry out what I'm trying to achieve, but um, I always leave room for trying out new things and and maybe catch catching a different perspective. So, do, um, do you have um, particular location? Because I know you said we're you know given where you are at the minute, it's not uh, like the Highlands of Scotland. But do you have particular places that you really really like to go? Ones that you revisit? Um, in my area, this it's where it's at is on the coast. Um, there's a beautiful uh, sort of zigzagged uh, pier. I know I wouldn't call it a pier. Would you call it? It's a harbour, and it's, it's in St Monans, and that's where I've been going constantly recently to try and get the shot. And um, but then when sun rises, it's faces east, so the sun rises at half four in the morning at the moment, and going at sunset where the sun, the light is still sort of there. It's just not been ideal. So everywhere I go um, around here, it's all coastal. And um, that's what we've got to work with here. And it's good, it's great, because um, there's a lot of different variables that you've got to fight against um, in an area like that, which uh, makes a good practice. Yeah. Do you, do you try your best, though, to kind of get out into the, like the bigger highlands? You know, I've, I've seen a lot of your, like, your large vista shots and such. Do you, or are they just kind of, you know, maybe once a month kind of things? Or do you kind of plan to, to go to certain locations or just take the opportunity when it comes? Yeah, I'd say I go on a monthly basis, but um, if I'm planning a sort of bigger shoot, I might hold off. I, I think generally, though, I will be up there once a month, maybe for one or two days. Um, I, I know the roads up there like the back of my hand now, so I can go anywhere and, and find it. So, yeah, um, I'll get up there as much because that's what that's my bread and butter, isn't it? Um, anything with a sharp ridge and peak, I want to be there. Yeah. Is, is that something that you kind of look for in a way when you're like location scouting or anything like that? Do you have particular kind of natural elements you go looking for? Um, yeah, but I, I love a hidden gem as well. I've, you know, the thing about photography, well, at least the, the genre that I, I'm in, it's become very saturated, especially online. You see the same, I feel like if I see another image of, old man of star i might scream <laughs> uh, and i love it i'll go every time there's no way i can go to sky and not go there yeah, um yeah. and it's beautiful but i need to i just like finding places that people don't go very often yeah um which is why maybe i've been a little less consistent going up is because i don't want to just go up and see the same bog standard thing at the side of the roads i'm trying to find something different trying to find somewhere even more remote um so yeah but generally it's something my subject i like it to be quite extreme or super hidden yeah no and i get that from like just browsing through your instagram now that you know a lot of the time for landscape photographers i look through and i've like you said you know it may be like the old man of store or something but it may be an iconic shot that you see over and over again but mm -hmm. i'm looking through your stuff and i'm not pinpointing the location exactly to go oh I know where that is and I know where that is and it's nice I mean there's one or two I recognize like Glencoe etc yeah. but the rest you know I think you know they, they look like there's someone that has spent more time and knows the area really well that, that is you know is probably a native and you are, you are Scottish um, but wants to maybe kind of show off the bits that you know they're away from the tourist traps in effect really as well I mean is that something you try to consciously avoid in a, in a sense like the popular things oh without a doubt um which is a shame because there's a lot of areas that i feel like i've, I've been and i actually haven't yeah, and i yeah. will go but i feel like i'm almost avoiding them because i 
I, I, I want to take photos, but I don't want to fall into that trap. It's so easy to fall into the trap of just taking the same photo. So if I'm going to these places, I make sure to go off the beaten track a little bit yeah. or find something to shoot through. Or the drone was a game changer, getting that up if I can, if you're allowed to. Um, but it's for me, it's all about finding the spots that are barely touched because um, you, I probably upload quite a lot, a lot more on Instagram. But I've been very conscious that you see the same places all the time. Yeah. Um, it's a real shame because I've got an arsenal of photos sitting there, but I feel like I don't want to upload them because I want to share the bits no one really sees. Yeah, and, and, and that's it. And it's it in the nicest way, not that other people that, that take those, you know, iconic images that, you know, they're all bundled in at the same, but you've got a craft, um, I suppose, a, an avenue for yourself. You've got to kind of stand out, you know, especially if you're, if you're trying to go pro, people want to see something a little bit different. I mean, I'm just looking at one shot here, um, which I've seen loads and loads of times, but never from this angle. It's one of the uh, Queen Victoria's Cairnstone um, that she yeah. built for Prince Albert or Prince Albert's Cairn, isn't it? It's called. Um, and I've seen it loads and loads of times from the point of view of somebody walking up towards it as it was just about to come out to that clearing. But your drone shot, I've never seen that particular position to show that it's actually on a hill and it's, it's in a bit of a clearing really. And it looks incredible kind of actually amongst the landscape itself. And I think that's a great thing that you can still photograph these kind of maybe popular sites, but it, doing something different with it is, is what you're trying to get towards, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I did. I felt a little bit guilty sending the drone up there because it is a bit of a memorial, isn't it? So when there's people sort of quietly observing it and then all of a sudden, it's like, mm, send that up. <laughs> You've got pretty high up in furnace. I don't think you'd be able to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I sense it as quickly as I could go. I like, get it far away so no one knows it's there. <laughs> <laughs> they can't blame you. They can't find out where you are either in the shot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose kind of, you know, we, we, we've got like a bit of a backstory as to kind of where you've come from and, and you know, what you're doing currently but looking forward to suppose you know at life after the tv show and everything you know, do you have any uh, projects kind of coming up really things that you're looking forward to do or anything else that that is going to catch your eye um right now uh, i've just started which it's a really it's going to sound like a really strange one but i've started working with a property developer called Cala homes and we've come up with a very interesting idea uh where basically it's almost like I'm going to be a mini ranking for them when uh, they're um, sort of hosting like a little challenge for their customers and residents and their different developments uh, to take photos of what they love about their home and from a different perspective. And I'm working with them to almost give out these assignments to everybody uh, and also in the surrounding area. Um, so I thought that was, you know, I jumped on that because I thought it was such an interesting idea and somewhere that you wouldn't, in a industry, you wouldn't really expect it. But I just thought it sounds like a good idea. It's, again, I enjoyed the show. So and it's a very similar sort of format, although yeah. it isn't something different. So I thought it was interesting. And I was like, yeah, let's yeah. Do it. Are they are they filming it? Is it going to be like a? Yeah, they're going to film videos. We're filming videos this week of me almost like talking about how to find that perspective and unlock that creativity and what to look out for. Obviously, they'll help me because, I mean, I can appreciate pretty interior and pretty buildings, but I maybe will miss out different attributes because that's not my thing. But yeah. um, that's the sort of thing we're working on now, which is really exciting. Um, and obviously, there's going to be a little bit of exactly what I'm all about, which is um, things in the surrounding area, because the one we're starting off with is in Edinburgh, so there'll be a lot of nice architecture and things to focus on. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, if you ever need any help, I think we've got a couple of blogs about shooting interiors and such. If you ever want to read, I can I'll, help I'm out. definitely going to give that a read then because I, for me, I just look at them, oh, those are nice curtains, not knowing that the, the curtains bring in the furniture over there. Do you know what I mean? I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, I think you'll be surprised. I mean, your composition is is universal, really. You've, you've just got to, you know, know the principles to be able to kind of adapt it a little bit. I, I think you'll be absolutely fine. But um, I mean, with, with that said, I mean, I, one thing we've not really kind of talked about that much is like camera kit and you know mm -hmm. on iPhotography for anybody that's listening a lot of students anyway will know we don't get 
bogged down too much in like kits and reviews and you know you need this that and the other etc because you know to a large degree it doesn't matter but I think it's interesting people do like to take a bit of inspiration from from people that they respect and people's images that they really like um I mean so with all that said what what do you shoot I know you said you were on a, a 1300d a few years ago yeah what, what um, have you upgraded to since <laughs> So for a while there as well, what I used my student loan money on was a, um, a Lumix GH5. And the reason I got that originally was because I wanted to shoot video in high frame rate. I love a bit of like silky slow-mo 120. Yeah, but um, I just, I've recently, very recently just went and got a Sony a7 III because I just preferred, there was little things about the GH5 just, changing settings and things you had to go through like a manual and on the screen just to get to change <laughs> one little thing the, the lens selection and things where it wasn't exactly what i was looking for so i decided to switch to sony recently but the the panasonic lumix gh5 was uh has done me real good over the last few years and um, but i just felt like it was time to change how, how are you finding the sony it's nice it's nice it's taken a little I keep, it's, it's funny when you've been on one camera for so long, you know, you don't even have to look and you can change things. Yeah. And I'm trying, even just turning it on and off, I'm like, where's the button to turn up? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but it's nice. It's um, it's when you get new stuff as well, though. I feel like I'm handling a newborn. I'm afraid to, because I'm really running gun, so I'm just chucking things everywhere and running about. <laughs> but um, I feel really delicate with this one, so I'm looking after it. Right oh, now. you do. It's it's like a baby, isn't it? Really, as yeah. well. It's so delicate. And you think oh, I don't want to take it out, you know, yeah. and everything, and the fear of breaking it. But I say that's what's ins- that's what insurance is for. You know, if you've got yourself covered, then you might as yeah. well just enjoy it. You know, that it's it's only plastic and metal; it can be replaced or repaired anyway. Yeah, very true. Although even just changing over lenses, I'm sitting there like. Like three, two, one, get it quicker possible. <laughs> I, I, I only do that. I do the exact same thing, but it's only because of dust. I just don't want dust getting in there as well because then you're oh god, I gotta take a paint, gotta take it off, clean it and everything. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to try to do lens changes as quick as possible. But yeah. Um, Coming on to one of our questions that we do a lot, we, we do pretty much in every interview that we do on the podcast, we call it our time travel question. Mm-hmm. Um, it's So it's to kind of kind of put you in the perspective that given all the knowledge that you have now, you know, all the information about photography and how you approach things, if you could go back all those years to when you just kind of first picked up that 1300D or was just starting to get into photography, if you could give your younger self like one little nugget of information to make photography I don't know, a bit easier maybe for you, a bit kind of quicker or faster in terms of learning. What would you say to your younger self? I sort of touched on it earlier as I think you've got to shoot anything and everything. And there's times where I went to uh, really at nice places and I would have a clear vision and I, me thinking, being quite headstrong, thinking I know what I'm doing. I don't need to snap this that I can just, I know what I need to get. I feel like, I would like to go back and slap myself in the face and be like, shoot everything. Don't, <laughs> don't leave any stone unturned because um, you need to sort of put your, you need to take things that are different. I sort of stayed in one lane for far too long. Yeah. And I feel like I've hadn't done that and been a bit more open-minded and given a lot of different genres a go, for example, then I maybe would even been in further than I am now. But I, yeah. I can't really complain because I'm happy with how things have turned out so far. So yeah, I think yeah. that's that's the best piece of advice I could give to my younger self would be shoot everything. Don't be sort of closed off to being like, no, I don't really like taking photos of that, especially when you haven't done it before. Yeah. You need to give it a go. Because like, I know we don't want to talk about the show too much, but with fashion, I'll never be a fashion <laughs> photographer. But, and I was sitting dreading it beforehand. But once I actually went and done it I was like I got a right buzz from that yeah. and I realized how much I actually just love taking photos no matter what it was yeah um so that's I think it. that that probably again goes full circle to what you said at the start about you just wanted to create you know it doesn't doesn't matter what the subject is in front of you and sometimes you, it doesn't matter if it's going to be a disaster but it's it's the opportunity and uh, mm. you know we you know we're all grateful to have those opportunities um I think you did a brilliant job I, I've in fairness I think everybody handled every assignment that they got thrown at them on the tv show so well um considering um their backgrounds uh, and, and and you know how people kind of dealt with the pressure I think it was the thing for me that caught my my attention so much was the time pressure 
that you weren't maybe like other formats of shows and such you're given like maybe a day or so to to kind of yeah. build it but was it literally just like you know the 15 minutes that were showing yeah literally and then one of the hardest ones was the documentary one because i'm not again I'm, I'm not a documentary photographer but my understanding is you get to know people you go see their environment almost live in it live and yeah. breathe them and find things out about them and then get your photos sort of thing because well that's what mario and our um mentor at the time was telling us mm-hmm. and then it was like okay so you've got 15 minutes to go <laughs> now go create a relationship with these people <laughs> and um learn about them but then also get photos and yeah. have a series not even just one photo get a series of photos that that's that was i mean yeah it was amazing challenge and i think it was I think a professional, someone that that maybe had been shooting that for a long time, I think they would have struggled as well. I was looking at it thinking, right, I wouldn't have been able to do like the fashion shoot. I mean, I, my background is portraiture and, and it's done in, in a studio portraiture. So I'd be com- comfortable with the surroundings, but to know to get, you know, four outstanding images mm-hmm. or that work together as a series in that short space of time, um, no, no, you know, doesn't matter how glamorous and how wonderful and how easy your subject is. You've got to come up with those ideas when you don't necessarily know who you're shooting and, and what your equipment and your layout is really. So um, yeah. I think, you know, so everyone did an, an, an amazing job given that, you know, you didn't know what was coming up really. But, um, um, but yeah, just before we end Jackson, obviously, you know, for, for people listening and for people watching, they're probably going to definitely want to know a little bit more about your photography on top of what we've been chatting about. Um, so where can they find out your websites, your Instagrams? What, what are they? Yeah. So my website is jacksonmoyles.com. Jackson Moyles, Moyles spelled M-O-Y-L-E-S. Um, my Instagram is e H Jackson, no space for air Jackson. And, um, you know, on my Instagram, there'll be links. There's also, I think the online exhibition, following the show's still running, which there'll be links on there as well. If you want to check out some of the things we're talking about there. Definitely, yeah. We'll put all the links for your Instagram and your your website kind of in the descriptions, whether you're watching this as YouTube or listen to it as a podcast anyway. But I just want to say thank you so much, Jackson, for coming on because it's been really, really nice kind of getting more to know about you and, and your photography because I, I know obviously being on the TV show that you had your tasks and your assignments and there's sometimes very little opportunity to actually find out about the person behind the camera, really. So I think that's been a, a great kind of understanding and help. And I may be kind of in another you know year or two we can kind of check up again and maybe do this one more time and, and see how things have changed for you and progressed yeah i'd love to i've had a great time today it was, it was brilliant talking to you i'll enjoy airing it all out so yeah Thank you very much. it's the phototherapy that's what it should be called yeah <laughs> it's not so much ranting but yeah it's just being able to kind of uh, express your feelings really but no that's absolutely lovely so thank you so much for coming on uh, and again if you've been listening to this uh, podcast i've been watching it thank you so much please subscribe and uh, and catch more of the episodes in the future but for myself and to jackson thank you so much for coming on Brilliant, thank you.